Hi everyone, welcome to Bold Learning. Today we will be discussing the finite element modeling of Corbel, reinforced concrete Corbel, uh, as shown in the video. Uh, the, the, the model has been uh, derived from this paper as shown on the screen. So let's jump into Abacus. Now, first of all, we have to create a model. Now here I have created a model by the name Corbel01. The first part is going to be the reinforced concrete uh, part itself. So let's call it Corbel. Uh, now let's create uh, the shape and then we will extrude it. So this is 300. Then we have 300, uh, 250, 200. So let's create those lines. This is 300. This is 250. And this is 200. Now we have an inclined line here. So rather than finding the actual length, the easiest way is to uh, draw a line here by the length 250 and then 160 downwards and then we can connect it and delete the other two lines so we just create a line of length 250 it is already 250 and then here I draw a line of length 160 and we join this one then I'm going to uh, see how much it is. It is 340 downwards. So this is 340. And I will delete uh, these lines. Done. You can delete these dimensions as well because we know the values. Okay, now I will offset some of these to the other side and then we can just connect them. So to offset, I'm going to use this tool. I uh, clicked it, clicked OK, then I'm going to press 300. So it has created the offset there, click OK. Then I'm going to use this. Now we have to offset it by 250 plus 300 plus 450, that is 750. So click Done. It hit 750. Yes, it has created it. And again, this has to be offset by 300. Click OK. Connect these lines. Connect these lines. It seems like this is not right because this has extended. This shape seems shorter. So this is. 250 plus 250, but it is, eight, uh, eight. it is 800, so there is a mistake there, so we can just delete it. So we are going to offset this again, done, 800, okay, we will connect this part, and then we will connect this part. As soon as this is done, uh, we can specify what is the thickness, what is the width, that is 150, so I will give the width as 150. Now I have created my concrete part of it, now I have to create some of the, uh, I have to create some of the, uh, the, the rebars. Before that I just also have to create uh, a few sections so that the mesh looks uh, uh, a little structured so I'm going to create some more sections now for that I have to create some partition I have to create a cell partition I have I will use this technique called the extend phase I will click this and create partition so this created a partition there and again I'm going to use uh, again to create it on the other side as well 
create partition again now uh, I'm going to apply my load to half this length in this area so I'm just also trying to create a partition here so let me just create a plane there first just click it here I'll flip it okay and I'm going to specify 125 so I've created a plane there again I'm going to create another plane here okay 125 okay now I'm going to create some partitions here again based on the datum plane so this is the datum plane specify I want to partition this cell and this is the partition that has been created there again I'm going to create some partitions here I want to partition this one and I'm going to select the plane it's this one Great. And this partition has been created now let's uh, move on into the next section uh, next uh, part I'm going to create my rebar so I'm going to use wire element the first part that I'm going to create is this longitudinal bar which is uh, which we are assuming a cover of 25 mm so this length is supposed to be 1000 so we'll decrease 25 20 current from either side so that gives us 950 let's call it the longitudinal bar we are going to use a length of 950 done now we're going to create the next part which is going to be the uh, the stirrups so when you assume 25 uh, 25 as cover so we have a rectangle of shape 250 by 100 so let's call this stirrups let's dimension it as 250 by 100 done now again the next part is going to be uh, the bend bars so to create the bend bars we'll have to create a, a point from here all the way up to here so this length would be uh, 750 because we are reducing 50, 50 from either sides and then we are uh, going to create these two lines and these inclined lines so let's create uh, Let's call it bent bars. Let's create this line. Let's give it a length of 750. Let's create this line. For this, let's reduce 25, 25 from either sides. And so that will be 150. So let's call it, let's specify 150 here. And again I'm going to create a line here I'm going to uh, specify this as 150 and I have these inclined lines let's use the same technique to create the inclined lines so I'm going to draw a line of length 250 okay and then a vertical line of 160 and I'm going to connect these I will delete before I delete I will just uh, okay uh, so I will just delete this I will use the same technique here uh, more line vertical so this dimension is going to be 250 and this dimension is going to be 60 and I will connect these two points and I will delete these. There is a little uh, more length to be added here. I'm just I'm just trying to skip that. It can be easily added. You can just 
extend this by a little now the next part is going to be um, so let's click done and the next part is going to be uh, a bar here this is probably a stirrup like thing it's quite long so the length will be 750 by 100 uh, stirrup so let's create that as well so it's going to be again new part let's call it uh, call bell stirrup I don't know what's, uh, what is it what it is called uh, technically but I'm just going to name it so uh, this will be 750 and this is going to be 100 hit okay now we have, we have created these now let's uh, create the materials uh, the first material is going to be uh, concrete so the density is 2.4 e minus 9 the unit is and the number is this because the unit is ton per mm cube this is the consistent one of the consistent set of units that have, has to be followed in a backus you can check on consistent units for a backus on Google and you will find what are some of the best units that can be used and then uh, we are going to create uh, elasticity now I'm going to pull up an Excel sheet from which I'll be copying some of these values I have I found these Excel sheets on, on research gate you may find it there or I can uh, put a li link in the description so I'm going to copy this so so this is copied here and then the next thing is plasticity damage plasticity model I'm going to use these values as it is copy these and paste these I'm going to copy all of these paste this and tension damage I'm going to copy these paste it here Click on OK, tensile behavior. I'm going to copy these. I'm going to paste it here. And tension damage. I'm going to copy these. I'm going to paste it here. So this is done. Click on OK. The next material is steel. Uh, I'm just going to use uh, elastic, perfectly plastic steel. E minus 9 elasticity is uh, you know it is 210,000 MPA I'm going to assume poisons ratio of 0 0.3 and I'm assuming it to be plastic at a yield stress of 450 MPA and the plastic strain of 0 so that means uh, it is elastic up to this 450 MPA strength and then it's going to be uh, plastic from there so that is done there I have to create the sections to assign to the to the materials to the model to the uh, to the parts the first is concrete section I'm going to give concrete click on ok the next section is going to be the steel uh, rebar section so let's uh, call it beam let's give it trust property done and the material is going to be steel and I'm going to assume 8 mm dia rebars so that is 50.24 mm square of cross-sectional area and hit ok and the next step is assigning these sections to the parts let's go one by one the bend bars are steel rebars so we are going to apply click done I'm going to apply rebar okay the next rebar is the next uh, is the corbel which is the concrete section click this click done and concrete section the next is uh, the stirrups so we're going to select these done steel rebar okay next is the longitudinal bar select this click done Click rebar, click OK, and the stirrups again, 
we are going to apply uh, the rebar and this is done so we have done all those now if you look at it the next part is the assembly in the assembly I'm going to uh, pull up all the members here I've ticked on this so that the members are not uh, at the same location when you hit this they will be separated by uh, some particular distance now what we can do is we can uh, import we can start we import just one copy of all of these and then we can create copies according to our requirement so I'm just going to create this click OK now I have to start moving this to their respective locations so let's first move uh, these this to the these bent bars to the location but for that I need to create a reference point to create a reference point I'm going to select this option where I will give create new point with respect to another point so click this I want the point to be uh, inside this uh, concrete so it's going to be 25 mm which is the cover in X and then Y minus 25 and in Z minus 25 so that will create a point inside uh, column uh, inside the, 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 the carbon and now I'm going to move this inside select done and click on this corner and I'll just place it there so that is put inside now I have to create a copy uh, inside that so I'm going to hide so this table pops up So this corbel has to be hidden. I'm going to remove. And now I have to create a copy of this. Done. 100 mm. And this will be one. And now it has been copied in the x direction. I want to make a copy in the z direction. So I have to specify that direction. I will just. Uh, specify the direction by hitting this one and I have to flip it because it has been copied outside the, uh, the model now it has to be put inside I'm just flipping the direction and when I check it back and I will click you can see that the model has been created the line has been created inside let's try to check that we can decrease the transparency and we can see that both the bars have come inside so now let's uh, move some of the rebars and uh, let's move the longitudinal rebar again to move the longitudinal rebar we need to create a point so I'm going to create a point similarly so it's the same 25 in the x direction minus 25 in the y direction and minus 25 in the z direction and I'm going to move this bar from here to here click OK and then I'm going to create copies uh, because I need four of them so click this I don't know it can be selected so I'm just going to hide the core bell I'm going to use this tool to create more copies done you can see that the copy has been created in the wrong direction we need a uh, it to be offset. Let's do it step by step. Let's make this as one. Let's specify uh, 250, but we need to specify the direction. So I'm going to flip the view. I'm going to select this. So that has created one copy here, and I need to make another copy in the minus C direction. So I'm going to make this as two, but I have to specify the diameter and the length as. 100. Again, it, it is copied in the wrong direction, so we have to properly specify the direction. Okay. So that creates the rebars. All, all the longitudinal four rebars have been kept in position. Now I need to uh, place the stirrups. So I'm going to rotate this 
about the x axis by 90 degrees and then I'm going to place them here so let's use the rotate tool so both have to be rotated let's do it one by one this one and I'm going to rotate it I'm going to specify the axis of rotation I'm specifying two points and then giving the angle and okay so now I'm going to move this from here and I'm going to place it here okay now I'm going to create copies of this in, in the minus y direction so for that I'm going to use this tool again so let me hide the corbel done see again it's in the wrong direction so let's specify the direction and I'm going to use 200 maybe two less let's use mm, 150 let's create more number of bars or let's even try 100 let's create more bars up to the end this goes out of the so let's not use that click ok now I just want to move these stirrups uh, a little downwards so I'm going to create a new point here let's move it by 25 mm so that will be uh, that's going to be 0 minus 25 and 0 to create a new point and I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to translate them downwards so let's select the bars we need to translate and I'm going to click done initial point final point okay so I've created this it looks uh, pretty neat and the next bar that I have to put is this one again I have to rotate it so I'm going to use the rotate tool I'm going to rotate it about its about uh, the x-axis by 90 degrees click OK now I'm going to uh, add one point in between I'm going to use the midpoint option or I can easily just move it to the midpoint of that line just click on this done hit this one and copy it here so that creates the rebar that puts the rebar there so I think the assembly is done here now before we forget we need to just uh, make sure that we are going to use this constraint here which is the embedment region so these are the embedded region done and uh, the, the host is going to be the corbel let's select the entire corbel done click ok so that creates uh, uh, the constraints now the next thing is going to be uh, uh, the step so in the step we are going to specify the boundary condition the boundary condition that I'm going to use is a pin boundary condition at this part and I'm going to apply loads from here so so this is going to be continue I'm going to select this region I'm going to specify uh, restraint in U1, U2, U3 which means it's a pin condition and in the next step I'm going to apply a load or a rather a displacement of 5 mm so I'm going to use dynamic explicit module and then I'm going to use a mass scaling just to speed up but uh, Keep in mind that using mass scaling could uh, seriously affect your results so this has to be checked before uh, using uh, large values of mass scaling and then I'm going to use a boundary condition uh, a new boundary condition because this has been propagated from the previous step 
which is the so I'm going to use a new one let's call it displacement so I'm going to apply a displacement on this plane done in the minus y direction in the minus y direction so it's going to be minus 5 uh, in the dynamic explicit module you also you always have to specify an amplitude instantaneous doesn't work so just I'm going to create an amplitude so when time is 0 amplitude is 0 and time is 1 the amplitude it's a simple linear uh, linear uh, load application and then I'm going to use this one and hit OK so I've specified the, the displacement as well now I need to mesh I need to mesh the parts one by one so the first part let's let's mesh the corbel first I'm going to use a mesh size of say 20 just to see what it looks like okay and I'm going to mesh it uh, mesh the part the mesh looks uh, uh, neat if we had not used the partitions you could see that some of the mesh won't look really neat here and the next uh, is just to see the element type the element type by default is C3D 8R and we don't have to change them next is the bend bar so I'm going to use a mesh size of 20 okay and I'm going to mesh it I'm going to also change it is by default beam I need to change it to truss click done I'm going to mesh the next corbel and the corbel stirrups I'm going to use the same mesh size I'm going to mesh it and also I'm going to check the element type which is truss click OK next is the longitudinal bar I'm going to use a mesh size of 20, apply, and I'm going to mesh it right now, and then I'm going to check the, the truss element, uh, and that's it, and then we have the small stirrups, I'm going to use, use a mesh size of 20, click on OK, and I'm going to mesh it, and then I'm going to check the mesh uh, type, element type, click on OK. Now before we uh, do the analysis we also have to make sure that uh, in fracture or failure tension damage and compression damage are both assigned so that we can see it in the visualization. Uh, now I'm going to I hope everything is done and we are going to apply you are going to make create a new job let's call it uh, corbel uh, one let's give the same name continue i'm going to use parallelization to use all my four cores i'm going to submit if there is any error we should see it right now it has been submitted you can check the status by clicking on monitor seems like it is running so I'm going to hit uh, hit this uh, pause the screen recording now and then I will come back and the result is done uh, the analysis is complete let's uh, take a look at the results this is the one Mises stress pattern stress contour I'm going to see the crack how the cracking has occurred so I'm going to scrub through the crack pattern you can see that the initial crack has appeared there 
and then it has progressed there has been damage there if you just take a look at the experimental work we can just compare our results with the experimental works but though we did not use the exact same material properties we can just see how the pattern looks like you can see that the crack uh, the initial crack must have been these uh, yes the crack is similar to what we got in the experimental and the numerical model which means that uh, our simulation was good enough thank you for watching bold learning uh, kindly subscribe like share and put your valuable comments below thank you